हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल टुडे वी विल सॉल्व सम ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चंस रिलेटेड टू टिक वेल्डिंग सो आवर फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कैन बी यूज्ड एज अ शील्डिंग गैस इन टिक वेल्डिंग सो व्हेन शील्डिंग गैस इज कंसर्न फॉर टिक वेल्डिंग द मोस्ट कॉमन शील्डिंग गैसेस आर आर्गन एंड हीलियम बट अपार्ट फ्रॉम आर्गन एंड हीलियम सम एक्टिव गैसेस आर आल्सो यूज्ड लाइक हाइड्रोजन एंड नाइट्रोजन so the answer will be all of the above while the most common gases are argon and helium but nitrogen is also used in small amount so the option will be all of the above so correct answer is all of the above primary gases are argon helium and hydrogen is also many times used however nitrogen is also used in some conditions so here in this uh, presentation slide you can see when uh, i have given the you know some description about argon Uh, so argon is used uh, in you know it uh, it gives reduced penetration and wider hz and with the help of uh, uh, with the help of argon or uh, due to argon the chances of getting undercut will be increased whereas helium is used and helium gives increased penetration whereas the chances of getting undercut is also very low in hydrogen see hydrogen is used in very small amounts that is less than 5% with argon uh, for austenitic stainless steel and nickel alloys so for welding austenitic stainless steel and nickel alloys small percentage less than 5% of hydrogen can be used along with the argon gas so mixture of argon and hydrogen can be used for austenitic stainless steel and nickel alloy and in nitrogen see nitrogen is also added with argon or a mixture of argon and nitrogen is used and the percentage of argon will be less than 5% and it is basically helpful during back purging of duplex stainless steel austenitic stainless steel and during welding of copper alloys so while welding of copper alloys you will use a mixture of argon and argon and uh, nitrogen nitrogen will be in a small percentage like uh, less than 5% so before moving forward uh, friends i would request you to support my initiative financially and you can do that by joining my channel see after subscribing my side channel you see a join icon or a join button and after pressing this join button you can become a member of my channel and you can support my initiative financially now question number 2 which defect would you expect to get in tig welds in non deoxidized steel so in non deoxidized steel you will uh, be getting or likely likelihood of getting porosity will be more so the answer will be b porosity what happens in the non deoxidized steel uh, there will be presence of oxygen and that oxygen can contribute to or that oxygen can lead to the generation of porosity now question number 3 you notice manual metal arc electrodes stripped of flux means see this question is saying that you have a smw arc electrode shielded metal arc welding electrode and that flux of that arc welding has been removed and it is being used as a filler wire for tig welding you would object because see every electrode is designed specifically for that welding process like if it's a smw arc welding electrode so that electrode has been designed only for smw if you will used that electrode in uh, as a filler wire in tig welding after removing that flux chances of you know the metal composition to be wrong will be there the metal composition may be wrong so uh, you know it is not advisable to use smw electrode in as a tig uh, as a filler wire in tig welding so the composition of the filler metal material may not be suitable for the specific requirements of tig welding hence it cannot be used so manual metal arc electrodes are designed for a different welding process that is uh, means it is designed for manual metal arc welding or shielded metal arc welding only not for tig welding now question number 4 when tig welding austenitic stainless steel pipe argon gas backing is used so while welding you know austenitic stainless steel backing of argon gas is given backing of argon gas means suppose this is a this is a pipe austenitic stainless steel pipe and you are welding from this side so from the back side argon gas will be supplied why it is supplied it is supplied to prevent oxidation 
मीन्स दिस आर्गन गैस विल सेपरेट द मोल्टेन वेल्ड फुल फ्रॉम एटमोस्फेरिक ऑक्सीजन आंसर विल बी प्रिवेंट ऑक्सीडेशन द आर्गन गैस क्रिएट्स एन इनर्ट एटमोस्फेयर अराउंड द वेल्ड एरिया शील्डिंग इट फ्रॉम एटमोस्फेरिक ऑक्सीजन सो दैट द ऑक्सीडेशन विल नॉट हैपन नाउ क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव विच आर्क वेल्डिंग प्रोसेस यूटिलाइज अ नॉन कॉन्ज्यूमेबल इलेक्ट्रोड सो ऑल दीज फोर प्रोसेसेस आर आर्क वेल्डिंग आर्क वेल्डिंग प्रोसेस लाइक मिग इज यू नो गैस मेटल आर्क वेल्डिंग टिक इज गैस ट्रांजेस्टर आर्क वेल्डिंग एम एम एज शिल्डेड मेटल आर्क वेल्डिंग एस एज सबमर्ज आर्क वेल्डिंग सो द आंसर इज टिक इन टिक वेल्डिंग अ नॉन कंज्यूमेबल इलेक्ट्रोड दैट इज मेड अप ऑफ टंगस्टन इज यूज वेर इज इन अदर प्रोसेस लाइक इन मिग वेल्डिंग द फिलर वायर इट सेल्फ एक्ट एज अ इलेक्ट्रोड इन एम एम ए और एस एम ए डब्ल्यू द यू नो द इलेक्ट्रोड इट सेल्फ एक्ट एज अ फिलर वायर एंड इन सम आर्क वेल्डिंग ऑल्सो द इलेक्ट्रोड इट सेल्फ एक्ट एज अ फिलर वायर वेर एज इन टिक वेल्डिंग द इलेक्ट्रोड ओनली जनरेट द आर्क एंड इफ फिलर मेटल इज रिक्वायर्ड दैट इज सेपरेट दैट इज सप्लाइड यू नो एट सेपरेटली दैट इज सप्लाइड सेपरेटली हैंस द ऑप्शन विल बी आंसर करेक्ट आंसर विल बी टिक the tig welding or tungsten heat gas welding process utilizes a non consumable electrode now question number 6 which of the following welding process would you expect to use a collet so friends collet is basically uh, you know it comes in the electrode assembly it basically holds the tungsten electrode so it is used in tig welding basically it is a part of the torch assembly and in the torch assembly there will be one collet and that collet holds the tungsten electrode in the holder so collet is commonly used uh, used in tig tungsten inert gas welding so the collet is a part of torch assembly and is responsible for holding and securing the tungsten electrode now question number 7 which of the following current types would be used for welding aluminum with tig welding so when you are using uh, tig welding for aluminum you will use ac current alternating current why because a layer of aluminum oxide will be formed on the surface of the uh, aluminum so when you are using ac current that aluminum oxide layer will be cleaned automatically hence due to that cleaning action ac is used so ac is effective for welding aluminum because it helps in cleaning the aluminum oxide layer from the surface during the welding process now question number 8 which of the following electrodes and current types may be used for tig welding of nickel and its alloy so for welding nickel and its alloys you will use zirconium electrode with ac current so friends electrode the tungsten electrodes are also of different types see like one you have a pure tungsten electrode the color code of pure tungsten electrode is green then you have thoriated electrode that is red in color seriated electrode and the color code of seriated electrode is uh, you know orange then lanthanated electrode zirconiated electrode and the rare earth electrode so in all these electrodes tungsten will be the major element tungsten will be major element and some small amount of other elements are used and based on those amount of uh, best than those uh, those um, uh, elements the names are given so if you know if you want to know more about tungsten electrodes then you can go to my website weldingidentity.com and you can read i have given all the basic concept about tungsten electrode and i have taken this photograph from my website only so the correct answer is zirconium electrode and ac current uh, why because it provides stable arc provides good penetration and gives cleaning action also now question number 9 which type of current is used for tig welding of carbon steels so for tig welding of carbon steels we use dc en that is direct current electrode negative polarity uh, in direct current electrode negative the electrode is connected with the negative polarity of the terminal negative polarity will be connected with the electrode for example see here if you this is electrode this will be connected with negative polarity and the workpiece will be connected with the positive polarity workpiece will be connected with the positive polarity see friends what happens 
एट द पॉजिटिव पोलैरिटी सेवेंटी परसेंट अप्रॉक्सीमेटली सेवेंटी परसेंट हीट इज कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड सेवेंटी परसेंट एंड एट द नेगेटिव पोलैरिटी थर्टी परसेंट हीट इज अप्रॉक्सीमेटली कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड सो हियर द वर्क ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोड इज ऑनली टू गिव आर्क एंड it generates only arc it does not melt so that is why here the 70% heat is concentrated at the work piece what will happen if you change the polarity if you change the polarity then the electrode uh, heat will be concentrated more at electrode and chances of melting of those electrode will be there so that is why dc en polarity is the best polarity for tig welding of carbon steels now question number 10 tungsten inclusion occur due to so tungsten inclusion is what when the tungsten electrode melts and goes inside the welding so that is tungsten inc inc inclusion so option is high current incorrect incorrect vertex angle lack of welder skill so friends the answer is all of the above due to the of the above reasons the tungsten inclusion can occur now question number 11 argon purging on the root side is necessary in tig welding of a stainless steel too so argon basically in stainless steel you give argon purging means purging from the inside and that is done to avoid porosity in the root avoid porosity in the root i have explained this in earlier slides also so the uh, option c will be the correct answer to avoid porosity in the root see what happens purging with argon creates an inert atmosphere on the back side of the weld and it prevents from the formation of porosity caused by the uh, which can be caused by the presence of oxygen now question number 12 which defect is not normally associated with tig welding option 1 is tungsten inclusion so tungsten inclusion can occur in tig welding there is crater pipe crater pipe you know it occurs at the end of the uh, welding so this can also occur in uh, you know tig welding now lack of fusion can also occur in tig welding but spatters are very rare in tig welding means it can occur but it is very rare in tig welding so option will be spatters spatters are not normally associated with tig welding the tig welding typically produces clean and precise weld with minimal spatters means very less spatters compared to other processes like gmw now question number 13 in the tig welding process slope in and slope out capability is useful in order to option a is avoid start porosity and crater pipes option b is reduce the risk of tungsten inclusions option c stabilize the arc option d allow more time for the filler metal to melt now in slope in slope out uh, you know technique what happens when you will start the welding the current will gradually increase not rapidly and when you you will end the welding the current will gradually decrease not uh, means uh, at a time so the gradual increase of current and the gradual decrease of the current gradual increase during start and gradual decrease during the end will be beneficial to avoid porosity at the start of the weld and to avoid crater pipes at the end of the weld so option a is the correct answer <laughs> white porosity and crater pipe see slope in and slope out capability is also known as ampere ramping ampere or current up and down slope so these are the name of slope in and slope out capabilities now slope in gradually increase the welding current at the start of the weld to avoid porosity and slope out gradually decreases the current at the end of the welding to prevent the formation of the crater pipes now friends i would again request you to join my channel and support my initiative so you can join my channel by pressing the join icon uh, which which is uh, underneath any of my video so after pressing this join icon you can become a member of my channel and you can support my initiative financially friends now question number 14 this is the last question nitrogen is used for tig welding option a is to stabilize the arc when welding mild steel to weld any material grouped as p1 to weld copper and nitrogen cannot be used as a shielding gas so we have four option now friends i would expect you to write the answer of this question in the comment box i will give you a hint while explaining question number 1 in this video i had explained different types of 
shielding gas and in the in those presentation the answer is there so go back to question number 1 and you will find the answer and please write the answer in the comment box thank you friends thank you very much